Welcome guys back to New Zealand Mysteries. Got a special story um, that I'm going to go through and you hopefully in New Zealand have heard of this young man that's missing. Um, he is a French national over here as an exchange student and this is his missing poster. I'm going to go through it. Now I can't say French or pronounce French names and I am going to butcher his first name but I'm just going to refer to him as Eloy um, because it's the best I can do. So we'll go through uh, Eloy Jean Roland, 18 year old male, last seen Saturday the 7th of March 2020 at the Britomart in the CBD by CCTV, uh, so this is in Auckland. His last phone ping was a location in Piha Road, West Auckland. He's described as 170 centimetres tall, slim build, wearing blue jeans and a white jacket and light blue flayed, flat, faded jeans, I should say, uh, with black sneakers and black backpack as per the pick below. Also, Eloy speaks limited English. I'm going to have all the information on screen at the end, um, but if you have any information, call 09 839 0697 or you can call Crime Stoppers 0800 So the first website we're going to go and have a look at is the rnz.co.nz and this was on the 20th of March 2020. Search continues for French teen missing for two weeks. Search and rescue crews are scouring parts of Auckland's west coast for any sign of a French teenager who's been missing for almost two weeks. Eli Rowland, 18, hasn't been seen since the morning of Saturday 7th of March when he arrived at the Fruitvale Road train station from Britomart. Police have been trying to piece together his movements from there. Detective Senior Sergeant Callum McNeil said they believe Roland walked from the train station to Piha. Through Eloy's mobile phone, we have identified that he was on Piha Road at 9.18am. However, his movements after this time remain unknown. We are asking all residents on Piha Road to check their properties and sections for any items of interest. We are also urging anyone who has a holiday home or unoccupied home in that area to please check their properties for any signs that Eloy may have been present. And obviously here you can see a CCTV picture of him and what he was wearing that day. Search and rescue personnel have been conducting searches of the wider Piha area for several days, but no items of interest have been found so far. It's almost two weeks since Eloy was last seen and police are doing everything we can to provide his family with the answers they desperately seek and hopefully locate Eloy safe and well, McNeil said. However, our concerns grow with each day that Eloy remains missing. Police said he speaks limited English. He is described as 170 centimetres tall with a thin build he was last seen wearing a blue and white jacket, jeans and a dark sneakers. So that's him there. Next we're going to take a look at the police website, uh, police.gov.nz and it has information about contacting them and submitting information which I will have at the end of the show. It says... Eloy Rowland, date of birth 1st of October 2001, date of disappearance 6th of March 2020 from Birkenhead, Auckland, of course. Circumstances, Eloy is an exchange student from France. He was last seen on the 6th of March 2020. Police are appealing to the public for any sightings or information regarding him. And uh, it's got all reference numbers and uh, places where you can submit. Like I say, I'll have those at the end of the show. Next we're going to go to the nzherald.co.nz French teenager Eloy Rowland missing in Auckland. Family stuck in France because of COVID-19. 
Uh, three weeks have passed and with the world turned upside down, the family of a missing French teenager is hoping the power of social media will help find their son. Eloy Rowland has not been seen or heard from since the morning of Saturday, March the 7th. Now, I've, some articles are saying March the 6th and some are saying March the 7th. Uh, cell phone data picked up later would place the 18-year-old in the area of Pihar Road about 10.4 kilometres away at 9.18 that same morning. Police believe he may have walked there. According to Google Maps, which I'll show you in a minute, uh, it would take approximately two, uh, two hours and eight minutes to walk from the train station to the corner of Scenic Drive and Pihar Road via the west coast. So one relative of Eloise wrote a heartfelt message from over in France, obviously, of the worrisome disappearance of her young cousin. My cousin Eloy Rowland has been missing in Auckland, New Zealand for almost three weeks. And despite many intense researches, we haven't found any trace of him since March the 6th. So I just want to give you a look at this. So obviously this is Newlyn and Fruitvale Road uh, and this is Scenic Drive where the last ping was. So uh, they reckon he travelled all this way and walked and um, that's quite a wee way. So she acknowledged that given the current COVID-19 pandemic, family members could not travel to New Zealand to help with inquiries from the ground or simply visit the places their son and brother was last seen. In the middle of a health crisis, we can't go to the spot, so there's only social media left to help my family and the police, she said. And you'll find as we go further on that um, there's a lot on social media and a big push has been made on there. She says thank you to all those who help us from near or far. And one way or another, I pray every day for you, Eloy, we will find you again. So remembering, Eloy had earlier caught a bus to downtown Auckland from the suburb of Birkenhead, North Shore, where he lives with his host family. He was then captured on CCTV at the Britomart train station where he caught the train to Newlyn. This is the post on Facebook from his French family. Of course, it's completely in French, so there ain't no way I'm reading any of that. But a couple of photos of him there. The latest update from police is that despite the coronavirus situation, a number of officers are still working on the case to find him. Police have urged anyone who may have seen or spoken to Eloy that morning anywhere on his journey or may have information that would help authorities to come forward. He has limited English and is described, of course, as being 170 centimetres tall and thin build. So, of course, down here again, we've got some information where, uh, you know, places you can submit information and I will have that information at the end. Next, we're going to mindfood.com. Uh, this is April 23rd. Item of interest found in search for French teen missing in Auckland. A t-shirt was recovered from Bush area in Karikari last week with Sergeant Callum McNeil saying it is being forensically tested. Search and rescue personnel have returned to the area to see if there are any other items of interest. Roland's family in France have issued urgent pleas for help to find their son, with them being unable to travel to New Zealand amid the coronavirus pandemic. They have called for collaboration between the French police and the New Zealand police and Roland's mother has also written to French President Emmanuel Macron. In a statement issued by New Zealand police on behalf of Roland's family, they said his disappearance is, quote, very out of character. They said he was due to fly back to France two weeks after he went missing as he was feeling homesick. Eloy is a calm, kind and curious teenager who loves adventures and enjoys being with friends. He loves the sea, surf and catamarans, read the statement. He also enjoys the beauty of the wilderness and recently found a particular interest in hiking. Eloy had come to New Zealand to study English six months ago 
and was in regular contact with his family several times a week. His disappearance is very out of character and we are extremely worried. He has never run away from home and always stayed in contact with his family. So this must be extremely hard for his family being stuck there and not being able to do anything or come over and help search for their boy or anything. It's just um, heartbreaking. We're going to tvnz.co.nz and this was Friday, May the 8th. Police say a t-shirt found in search for missing French teen was not his. So police have confirmed that a t-shirt found in bushland west of Auckland last month does not belong to missing French teen Eloy Rowland. It comes as police search and rescue personnel continue to search the Waitakere Ranges in an effort to locate the 18-year-old. Police say despite countless searches and numerous public appeals for information, there has been no confirmed sightings of him. A local resident has today come forward and claimed ownership of a t-shirt they had taken off during a bushwalk at Kelly Kelly, which was potentially thought to be Eloy's at the time. Search and rescue staff have now covered the majority of tracks within the Waitakere Ranges, including all open tracks and roadways. Police are aware that public searches have been taking place in these same areas and are planned again for the weekend, but people, uh, sorry, police say they appreciate the concern and good intentions. However, under the current Alert Level 3 restrictions from COVID-19, People are asked to only search their sections. And of course, Eloy's family have been unable to travel to New Zealand because of border closures. Next, we're going to nzherald.co.nz. This was on the 4th of May. Family of French teen Eloy Rowland missing in Auckland since March. Reveal more and we actually hear some worrying information the family of a French teenager who mysteriously disappeared in Piha two months ago say he was likely going to collect the area's famed black sand to take home to show them, but they say he was also lonely and quite disturbed before he went missing and had suffered several sentimental setbacks during his time in New Zealand. And it says he was staying with a host family in Birkenhead on the North Shore and was reported missing after he failed to return home on March the 6th. Today the Herald spoke to Roland's sister, and I'm not going to say her name because there's just no way I'll pronounce that, uh, who said he was in regular contact with her and the rest of the family. They spoke or messaged several times a week. She said he was determined to want to return to France as quickly as possible, explaining to everyone that he was homesick. I told him of my surprise at his premature return, which seemed to be very abnormally hasty. Roland's return ticket was scheduled for late May, but he was set to head back to southern France on May the 21st. Of course, then uh, this COVID-19 pandemic happened and our borders got closed, just adding to his plight. She said he assured me that he wanted to see his missing, uh, to see his missing friends again, that he felt too lonely, and that he preferred to return as soon as possible to prepare for a test in view of joining the air force. If he failed, he planned to continue his studies in a preparatory class in Toulouse. She said her brother had suffered several sentimental disappointments, but seemed to be resilient when they last spoke. He wanted to move on and accept things as they were. He had positive thoughts. He really looked forward to coming back. He expressed the desire to return to France as quickly as possible, justifying this by a heavy loneliness and projects to be carried out. She said her family had spent endless hours speculating about what may have happened to him, um, but they really had no idea. She says, we were not by his side in New Zealand. We only knew what he wanted to tell us, both about his schedule and his friends, his outings, his activities, his moods. 
Personally, I found him quite disturbed in the last months preceding his disappearance. I had questioned him at length on this subject, and yet he kept assuring me that everything was fine and that there was no reason to worry. Roland's family wanted to come to New Zealand and look for him themselves, but the global COVID-19 pandemic and travel restrictions meant that it was not possible. Uh, his sister said she felt impotence at not being able to actively participate in the investigation. She says it's very difficult for all of us, especially my parents. And I just can't imagine what they're going through. Leaving your child alone and as far away as Auckland is not trivial. And they had thought about it a long time before agreeing to support Eloy in this project, which was dear to their heart. They were afraid for him, like any parent, for fear that misfortune could happen to their child. That's a cool picture. She said everything about the trip was well organised and her parents regularly sent money and were vigilant from afar to make sure he lacked for nothing. Her parents had been in contact with the host family who reported Roland missing very quickly. No one knew where Roland had been on the night before or who he was with. He had talked about going to Piha on foot to fetch and bring back sand from New Zealand as a souvenir of his trip. He had informed our parents of his intention to go there on foot in the morning and also to return on foot in the afternoon, but without specifying the date on which he planned to make this excursion. His main reason for being here was to learn English, but he also worked part-time in a restaurant and then in a hotel. His sisters keep saying he participated in organised evenings when the opportunity arose for fun, but also in search of love, she said. Since January, he expressed an interest first of all in psychology, then he became very suddenly and strongly interested in the environmental cause. And he also found a recent attraction for hiking, it seems. Just sounds like a typical teenager that flip-flops from, you know, things they're interested in and finds new things they're interested in. She said he sometimes spoke, spoke to me about Piha, saying it was a wonderful place he even wanted to bring us to New Zealand just so we could see the beauty of his beach. She said he was calm and a kind teenager who was a bit dreamy and sometimes naive. He is passionate about sailing, especially catamaran. He likes travelling, she said. We thank all the effort, efforts undertaken to find Eloi and we are grateful for the responsiveness the benevolence of the police of New Zealand and all the inhabitants. She said Roland had two Facebook pages, has two Facebook pages, which he regularly updated until March the 6th when he made his last post, which was just an image of a black square. Something else that teenagers do, weird stuff on Facebook that uh, makes no sense to everybody else. Detective Senior Sergeant Callum McNeil said police were keeping an open in mind around what has happened to Roland, but as each day passes, the chances of finding Eloy alive and well are sadly becoming more slim, he said. This has been an incredibly difficult time for his family in France, and we are supporting them as best we can. We continue to do everything we can to find Eloy and provide his family with answers to the questions they desperately seek. Next, there was a press release from the New Zealand Police on Friday the 8th of May 2020, so a few days ago, and I'm getting this from scoop.co.nz. Police continue search for missing teen Eloy Rowland, and they have a message to the community. Detective Senior Sergeant Callum McNeil from the Waitemata Police Police search and rescue personnel continue to search the Waitakere Ranges as efforts continue to locate missing French teen Eloy Rowland. Despite countless searches and numerous public appeals for information, unfortunately there has been no confirmed sightings of him since then. Despite being two months since Eloy was last seen, Police search and rescue efforts are still continuing and more than 1,600 hours of searching has been carried out to date. Search and rescue staff have now covered the majority of tracks within the Waitakere Ranges 
including all open tracks and roadways. But I'll just uh, police are aware that civilian searches have also been taking place in these areas. Police appreciate the concern and good intentions shown by those in the community who have been searching for him. However, under the alert level 3 restrictions, they ask that local residents search only in their own sections and stick to their bubbles. All open tracks and roadways that are open to the public, which have been the areas of focus in the public searches, have already been covered by police search and rescue. There are a number of restrictions currently in place in the Waitakere Ranges, including a large number of walking tracks that are closed, with off-track activity also not permitted due to Kelly dieback. These areas can only be searched by police search and rescue teams. Due to these restrictions, police do not want to risk members of the public getting lost and subsequently putting themselves at risk of needing to be rescued. And we would appreciate if the search is left to the highly trained specialist search staff. Now the final place I want to show you is the Facebook page called Missing Eloy Jean Rowland. And this was put together by a lady called Scylla Tokara. Now this woman who didn't know Eloy from a bar of soap at all, but a mum and uh, could feel the pain of his family stuck in France and not being able to come over and find him and how traumatising that must be, took it upon herself to create this uh, page and it has thousands of subscribers at, or followers. She has also planned numerous and undertaken numerous searches for Eloy. Uh, she has put together posters. I know she's just done an amazing job and hats off to her because she really has undertaken this without, you know, oh, she's just amazing. I wanted to share um, one of her posts on the 9th of May. Evening everyone, in regards to calling off the public search today and tomorrow, this wasn't an easy decision to make. The police did not ask me to call it off, but however, they did remind me to evaluate the safety of others that I'd be putting at risk when out searching. So if you think I've given up on finding Eloy, I haven't. I was out there today just with a smaller team and I'll continue to search for him. In regards to the police and what they're doing, I can assure you that they've been out there with their search and rescue teams and currently are still out there looking for him. When I made this page, most of you probably didn't even know this kid was missing. Eloy's disappearance has impacted my life and as well as others. Tomorrow, which uh, will be Mother's Day, it's definitely going to be a real tough day for me because I feel like Eloy has become a part of my family and to know that he is out there somewhere, it breaks my heart big time. Eloy's family requested me to spend some time with my family this weekend due to it being Mother's Day tomorrow. They've also thanked me for helping spread the word through numerous, numerous Facebook ads and for creating this page. So you all have been absolutely amazing for helping me spread word and I thank you for that. So as you celebrate your Mother's Day with your family and children tomorrow, I ask you to keep Eloy's mother in your thoughts and the rest of their family in your prayers. I wish you all a wonderful Mother's Day tomorrow. May your day be blessed with love, laughter, being around, surrounded by your loved ones. Uh, what an amazing woman. Absolutely amazing, and through the spirit of Kiwis, New Zealanders, you know, there's just heaps of heaps of followers, and this page has been shared, and people have turned out for the searches, so she's coordinated all that, she's done an amazing job. So, definitely join this page, uh, she provides updates all the time of what's going on, she talks to the family, obviously. I know that uh, also there is a Give a Little page in the works being made and I'm going to post information on that in an update when that comes about. So just going over some of those uh, details. 
Now, remember, he was not seen since the morning of Saturday, 7th of March, 2020, when he arrived at the Fruitvale Road train station from Britomart. Police believed Eloy walked from the train station to Piha. All Piha residents are urged to check their properties and sections, also any holiday homes or unoccupied homes. If you have any information, if you talk to him, seen him, or if you find something on your property, even the littlest thing that you don't know might be connected, might not ring anyway. So you can contact the Waitemata Crime Squad on 09 0697 or anonymously via Crime Stoppers on 0800 555 one. You can also visit Crime Stoppers online, which is also anonymously crimestoppers-nz.org. And I really urge you to join the Facebook page and join that wonderful woman, Scylla, who has put so much time and effort and love into that page and into the search for Eloy and give her a bit of a heads up and a, and a bit of a pat on the back for the, for the job that she's been doing, especially for his family that are stuck. So that is called Missing Eloy Jean Rowland and... If you go to facebook.com forward slash missing Eloy Jean Rowland, but I'm sure if you just type that into Facebook, it will come up anyway. I will update you uh, in short videos uh, and podcasts if there's any inf more information that comes up. But if you join that Facebook group, Scylla will keep you updated on everything that goes on anyway. Thank you very much for joining me. Uh, this is a very sad story, but... Let's get the information out there and hopefully this young man can be found. See you later.